Before CVUUF had ministers as the vice president in charge of worship service, I invited a Holocaust survivor, Irene Firestone, to give the story for all ages <laughs> and the sermon. For the children, Irene bared her forearm to show her number that was tattooed there by the Nazis. She shared how one day a group of men prisoners were paraded through the concentration camp. Through the bars, she recognized one of them from her hometown. Their eyes met, and she was terrified, knowing that if he stepped out of line to greet her, he would most likely be shot by the guards. He spoke. Irene, are you hungry? She did not speak, but nodded her head, yes. He quickly jumped out of line to give her a biscuit through the bars that he had under his coat and jumped back in line. He was not shot. Irene shared with our children that the boy was from the poor part of town. He was not treated nicely by her or the other rich kids. She told our children to always treat all others with dignity and respect. I invited Sarah Kahn to do the story and, uh, for all ages and the sermon. So Sarah Kahn will now st- share with you a heartfelt personal story. Thank you, Floyd, for that heartfelt story. And thank you to all of you guys for being here today. Did you like the music video? Yeah? yeah. Well, so right here is another cover girl who's going to be rocking her job for you guys. <laughs> so I'm truly honored and humbled to be uh, given the opportunity to be part of such a beautiful congregation. And that too on a special day. Do you know why is it special? Yes, that's right. Today is Eid. That's why I have henna on my hand. But thank you, thank you. So today marks the end of Ramadan. So I not only get to celebrate Eid with my Muslim community today, but also right here with my brothers and sisters of various faith. So I'm truly grateful for that. So let's start with the story, shall we? Did you know that at some point in life, you're all going to be handed some kind of weight that's going to feel like it's just too much to handle? Here, look at this teacup right here. It's so dainty, isn't it? Now, what if I told you that this teacup can weigh as much as an anvil? Would you be willing to carry it for me? You know, in our family, there's nothing like tea time to gossip to share secrets, even resolve fights. And speaking of family, I have an older sister, Alia. Now, Alia is not only considered smart and stunning, but also a true goody two-shoes. Yeah. You know the type, right? The daughter whose judgment is always sound. The sister whose opinion is always sought. So you can only imagine how I felt growing up. (laughs) But the worst part is that she's always correcting me. Yeah. You know what? Scratch that out. The worst part, she's always right. (laughs) Raise your hand if you have an older sibling. Anyone? Yeah. Doesn't that drive you crazy? Right? Raise your hand if you are the older sibling. Well, now you know that you're crazy. Anyway, so five years ago, I finally got my chance to be right. Now, it was Halloween night, okay? And Ali and I were just relaxing over tea when suddenly she suggested that we take our kids and stand at the door so we can distribute candies to the neighbors. Now, I was shocked because we had never celebrated Halloween before because she did not believe in celebrating Halloween. So here was my chance to lecture her. Yeah, so I said, Alia, since when did we start celebrating Halloween? I thought it was agreed that we don't dress our kids up as ghosts and goblins and we don't encourage them to believe in superstitions. Yeah, as you can see, self-righteousness was prickling all over my skin. (laughs) Now, in that calm and reasonable manner that was always hers, she said, come on, Sarah, kids are not dressed up as ghosts and goblins. 
And our house is not decorated in cobwebs and tombstones. All we're doing is being good neighbors by distributing candy. Well, even if that made sense, I wasn't going to give up on my one chance to be right. Yeah, it was rare that I got to feel holier than thou, you know. Yeah. So I pushed back and challenged her suggestion. Well, she pushed back and challenged my opinion. Now, soon we started disagreeing, then debating, then arguing. Next thing you know, the argument escalated way beyond candies and into forbidden territories. We started shouting at each other while our kids watched petrified. So I grabbed both my kids and I stormed out yelling, I am done with you! Have you ever been so angry at someone that you vowed never to speak to them again? Yeah? Well, I didn't speak to Alia for days. Now, as days became weeks, weeks became months, my anger became a boiling grudge. That grudge became a simmering resentment. Now, she called a couple times, but I, I just couldn't pick up the phone. My ego wouldn't let me. Six months passed. It was summer now and we were still not talking. I did miss her, you know, but to me, it felt like calling her meant accepting defeat. All her life, she had been right. Just once, I wanted to be right. Now that summer, I actually had a surprise visitor. Papa. Now just picture Gandalf the Great, yeah? You know, you shall not pass. That's Papa the Great. Yeah, as, and as you can see, I'm just a Frodo. <laughs> Anyway, so Papa always calls me his favorite youngest daughter. Yeah. So while Papa was here, I didn't utter a word about the fight. Now on his last day, we were just relaxing over tea, when suddenly he handed me his teacup saying, can you hold this for me, my dear? So I did. And then he said, so Alia called me the other day. I was shocked. I told him I couldn't believe that she'd call and complain about me. But then he said, she didn't call to complain, Sarah. She was crying and apologizing to me for hurting you. <sighs> My heart ached when I heard that. And then I realized that my hand was aching too because I was still holding on to this cup. So I said, Papa, may I put this down? Not yet. He said, does it hurt? I said, yeah, Papa, my hand's hurting. No, my dear. Right here. Does it hurt? I was speechless. I just nodded my head. And then he said, that's all right, I understand. Now tell me, Sara, how does that cup feel right now? You know, by that time, my entire arm felt paralyzed over this dainty cup. So I said, Papa, it really hurts. May I please put it down? As if he saw through my pain, Papa said. But Sara... You have been holding on to your cup for six months now. Your heart must feel so heavy, isn't it? Put your cup down. See, Papa was right. Alia had forgiven me, yet I had been holding on to resentment for so long. I felt paralyzed. I needed to put it down. So I said, Papa, you're right. I need to put my cup down. He yelled, please do your spilling tea all over my lap. <laughs> so Papa left that day after I cleaned his pants. Yeah. But his words of wisdom stayed behind. So that day, I put my cup down. And then I called Alia and apologized to her. And you know, it's ironic that that day, I finally got my chance to be right. 
by admitting that I was wrong. And after talking it over, I realized that that feeling of not being good enough had created so much bitterness in me that that resentment had been brewing inside me way longer than just those six months. It had just bubbled to the surface through that petty argument. Resentments ruin relationships. They should never be allowed to weaken the bonds of family and friendship. So tell me, have you ever held on to resentment over an argument with a friend, a family member, or even that coworker who's always wrong? You know what I'm talking about, right? But isn't it true? The longer you hold your cup, the heavier it gets, the more it hurts. We presume that time will heal us, but if we wrong each other and never close the wound, how can we heal? Even if it wasn't our fault, even if the other person wronged us and the wound was never acknowledged, letting go of our ledgers of injustice and retribution, letting go of resentment isn't about invalidating the pain they caused us. No, it's about ending our suffering by refusing to relive the pain over and over and over again. When we exchange our resentments for inner freedom, that's when healing begins. So I ask you all to look into your lives and ask yourselves, what weights am I still holding? And for how long? Just imagine how high we can soar once we are free of our burdens of grudges and resentments. Well, you'll never know until you put your cup down. Thank you. <laughs>